Hello, I'm Gareth N. Avis, and this is the Championship Rounds for Pitch Boxing, where I bring you all the interviews from the combat sports world. Enjoy. Robert Smith, uh, General Secretary of Boxing Board of Control, joining me on the Championship Rounds for Pitch Boxing. First of all, Robert, let me just ask you about the weekend. It's always a big event with Anthony Joshua. Um, what did you make of it? Is he over-criticised in your view as a boxing observer? I think he is. Uh, he did a workmanlike performance uh, against a trickier customer who, you mustn't forget, gave Gillian White a very hard night uh, a few months ago. Um, Anthony was coming back. He's obviously got a few things going on in his life. He um, he came back, boxed well, I thought. Um, and it's easy to criticise somebody, but we, we should really think about what this boy, this man has achieved. I mean, he, he didn't actually start boxing until he was about 17 or something, later than the poet was 17. And uh, he's done, has had a remarkable career. Um, but, you know, we all expect too much of people. And um, But I thought he boxed all right. Uh, he did what he was meant to do. And we all want spectacular performances we didn't get it but I think he did all right um and uh, I, I I think it's a bit harsh criticizing him too much do, do you agree with this promoter Eddie Hearn that um which is something that Hearn always puts out there which is it's very quickly forgotten um what Anthony Joshua has brought to British boxing over the last decade and a bit since winning Olympic super heavyweight gold that that this kind of the ability to to sell out stadiums to 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 for, for everyone else perhaps to benefit as, as we say when heavyweight boxing's healthy the whole of boxing's healthy isn't it yeah. you know yeah. um that there's almost this cascade that helps that has helped british boxing absolutely i think that you know he, he comes across very well um he's had difficulties in his young life his boxing has helped him to achieve what he's achieved it is right um with regard to how he's brought um, public eye to the sport, um, and he, you know he comes across he comes across good, and uh, you know he can fight. You know he's a, he's a good boxer. Um, is he the best in the world? Possibly not. But does, is that is that is that is that a terrible thing? And he's certainly top, top three or four, uh, which is um, a hell of an achievement. How big would he against? And they may not put him in with him right now, but how big is is? Uh... Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury still on the British landscape as far as you see it from British border control, boxing border control perspective. Is that one of the biggest events we'll ever have seen in the UK? I don't think just because of British boxing border control. I think they're just sporting event in Great Britain. It's massive. You know, two, two British boxers boxing for a, a world championship. Um, and uh, no, I think it's a massive event if it, can, if it can be done. I hope it can be done sooner rather than later. Um, because you know you know what it's like in boxing. Although you keep saying heavyweight boxing, boxing's boxing. You hit on the chin, you fall over sometimes. So uh, you know the quicker we do it before anybody possibly gets beat again. But the quicker we do it, the better. And um, I just think it's a it's a it is a very very big attraction. Um, you have said uh, that Conor Ben won't fight in the UK until he. I think you might have the headline might have been proves his innocence, but. I th I think you've said until he has a has a has a hearing with 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 a pa panel from UCAD, it's not he's not going to be heard by the boxing board of control, which you're at pains to point out, aren't you? Yeah. Um, okay. There are, you know, the rumor mill is very strong. Conor Ben was there on Saturday night at Anthony Joshua, Jermaine Franklin. Did you manage to have a word with him? Did you guys speak? Shook his hand, said hello. Um... Said he needs to speak, but obviously Saturday night was not the ideal opportunity to speak. Um, but ultimately, this is down to UK now. Um, so, you know, any any hearing that takes place will be before. Well, you, UK represent the boxers' board of control, so therefore any hearing will take place before an independent panel, um, completely independent panel, and uh, it's up to them to decide what's going to happen. But that's ultimately up to Mr. Ben and his lawyers. Um. <clears throat> You know, I mean, obviously, I was <clears throat> unsuccessful in speaking to to Connor. A lot was made of it, but um, on Saturday night. But um, was that a good feeling that you guys actually shook hands and that you've seen the young man? Because we haven't really seen him around a boxing event for six months. Was did that did that make you feel 
that something may happen as a result? That Gareth, I'm not going to make any decision, am I, with regard to this? So um, I've got nothing against Conor Ben, other than the fact that he needs to explain why a product is in his system, and uh, and until he does, that's where the issue is. But it's down to you. I believe it's down now down to them dealing with UCAD. If they want to deal with UCAD, if they don't want to deal with UCAD, then then that's a different thing altogether. But you know, other uh, you know that that is the process we have or the procedure we have, and uh, that's the way we're going to go. We want to go. Oh, obviously, look, the rumor mill is in in strong force. You ha you haven't um, you won't have missed it. There is talk. I mean, Conor, Conor Ben's even said in his social media in the last week, um, June the 3rd, Abu Dhabi, and we believe that they're speaking to, well, Eddie Hearn has said, we don't need to believe, Eddie Hearn has said, uh, it looks like Chris Eubank is top of, top of the priority list to, to face Conor Ben in Abu Dhabi on June the 3rd. Manny Pacquiao has been mentioned, as has Kel Brook um, as well. Um, where is your stance on because obviously clearly say for him to fight in the UK he needs to have a hearing uh, with the independent panel from UCAD um where is your stance on on them taking uh the fight to Abu Dhabi I mean I'm very clear about it I think I feel like they've bypassed the the system in a sense and and used a loophole to go there if they go there it's not announced yet um, but what's your take on that? What, 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 do you feel powerless in some ways? Well, you know as well as I do, and we've discussed it on many occasions, there's no world governing body, so we all generally look after ourselves. I'd be disappointed, uh, personally. Um, however, if that's their option, if that's what they want to do, there is a procedure in place, um, and I believe you should stick to the procedure. Um, you know, he could be innocent. I mean, we, we just don't know, you know, and I hope he is. Uh, because he's a very good talent. Um, but until we get the explanation, other than the fact I'm innocent, where's the explanation? Just give us an explanation and UCAD can deal with it and the independent panel can deal with it. It seems relatively simple to me. Well, peculiarly, the WBC found an exoneration through number of eggs because eggs can create clomiphene in the system according to historical evidence, as they're saying, and it will be raised with WADA. For the world anti-doping agency that that was in that document or that statement put out by the wbc so do, do you i mean i know you can't predict this but if he were to come in front of the ucad inquiry um is 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 that is that viable evidence even though he said no it's not that is that viable evidence for them to to say look um I'm going to get on to Amir Khan in a minute. This is We don't see this as intentional. And therefore, because it's uh, not intentional and there seems to be a body of evidence here, we can give you um, some leniency, perhaps, um, and you will serve a certain ban and fight in the UK. Because does it make any sense to you where he said, I, the board have it in for me, as he'd said in that interview with Piers Morgan, it doesn't look as though he intends any time soon to come in front of the board, even though Eddie Hearn is now saying, I'd like him to have his hearing, if you've seen that. I don't, I don't understand why anybody would say the board have it in for you, um, because we just want an explanation. You know, we, have a, we have a positive test, a true positive test. What's the explanation? Um, and I'm not going to go too deeply into it, but until you get the until you get the evidence, you can't really make a decision on anything. And we haven't had any evidence. Uh, who knows? You know, the evidence he supplies may do may do the trick. I don't know. But why why not send it in? That's what I'm confused about. But we don't have a thing against Conor Ben, not at all. I mean, you know, he's an athlete. He's a very good boxer. We want him to compete in Great Britain. But we want him to compete in a, in a in a in a system that is fair for everybody. Um, at the present time, we are not in that position, but I hopefully we are one day. Um, but let's just you know we've wasted a long time to get where we are now. We don't seem to have moved on too far. Let's just get on with the bloody thing for Christ's sake. So um, you know, and but that's but as I say, that's up to him. That's up to him and his lawyers. He's been advised by lawyers. Um, I presume he's been advised by, by lawyers uh, now, up until now it has been, but what he's doing now, I don't know. But, um, you know, 
let's just let's just sort this thing out and, and take it from there. Did you feel any animosity from him on Saturday night? Next question. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, well, it, it's a catalogue of things. Right. We Did both you feel were... any animosity towards you on Saturday night? Did I feel any animosity yeah, towards yeah. me? Yeah. From Conor Ben? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I did. But but it's irrelevant. I'm just doing my job. That's yeah, all absolutely. I'm doing. I'm just doing. I'm just doing my job. He's a young man. Uh, he obviously has it has it in his mind. He's an, every time I've met him previously, he's been a very very nice person. I, I I don't know him that well, but he's been always been very very good to me. It's just we're in an unfortunate situation. Yeah, and and like you, I've never said he is a drugs cheat. All I've said is clomiphene's been in his system twice. And I'd like him to go, it's very similar to you, just to go through the procedure. We've both been around a really long time mm. and, and, and in the sports a long time. And 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 as, as human beings, you know, we're, we're similar age. And you just, this is a very, personally, I think it's a very unusual situation because I've never known one like this. No, um, neither have I. Neither have I. So um, in the way it's been dealt with, I mean. Um, no, no, absolutely, neither have I. Every every time we've had a positive de- test, the athlete has been cooperative to try to clear the name. This is the first time that this has been slightly been slightly different. Right. Well, it's a perfect segue to waking up yesterday morning to another issue: Amir Khan banned for two years by UCAD for ex- they've accepted. I've got my notes here on it. Um, uh, for, for Osterin, which obviously was a drug invented for people with muscle wasting diseases initially. And obviously it helps to build uh, muscle uh, muscle mass. <clears throat> um, under the strict liability of UCAD, um, uh, the, the Khan um, has um, claimed it was non-intentional and, and UCAD ruled it wasn't deliberate or reckless conduct. He said, I've never cheated and I never will. Um, um, he's also claimed it was a tainted supplement or a human uh, contact. Uh, yeah, and UK had decided that dose was too small to be intentional, uh, that they'd found the traces. So uh, to give a performance in, in uh, advantage. So he gets a two-year ban. Um so he's not being called a cheat by UCAD, but they're saying strict liability, um, two-year ban. He's retired anyway. He's very unlikely to box again. So it's kind of doesn't affect him materially. Should he have been fined for that then in some way, Robert? Because, you know, he's, he's um, you know, he, he, he has done something wrong in their eyes for him yeah. to take a two-year ban. Well, that's something we need to look at now. Um, obviously, it was made public the other day. Um, I've been aware of uh, of uh, issues from about April of 2022. Obviously, everybody has a right to um, supply evidence, etc. Unfortunately, with UCAD, and I'm not criticising them too much, but it t- does take a long time. Hearings take place, of which we don't have any part of. And then they obviously uh, made a decision beginning of the year given an opportunity for anybody to appeal, which we did not, and I presume Mr Khan did not, and then it was published the other day. Um, he challenged so, it, though, didn't he? That's why it took so long, because a lot of people are long. asking, <laughs> a lot of people asking why it's taken 14 months. Because he it, was, it was a post-fight test, presumably, yeah? yeah? Can we clarify that? There, there was a hearing that took place. So uh, It was a post-fight test, yeah, yes? Yes. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But so one, so why 14 thing, months? I mean, as I said to you the other day, I mean, not the other day, this morning, or no, last night, actually. But um, I'm ex- exceptionally surprised because of maybe of all the boxers in this country, he's been tested more than anybody else. Yeah. You know, from his amateur days as a 17-year-old, and he fought for British, he fought for championships relatively quickly, Commonwealth title, etc. Very relatively quickly, so he was tested, re- you know, on a, on a regular basis. And this is the first time there's ever been an issue. So, I don't, you know, that's one of those things. Um but yes, possibly we'll have to look at that. But, you know, he has retired. Um, the decision, you know, if he would have won, then there would be a no contest. But he didn't win. Uh, so that shouldn't change anything with regard to that. 
Uh, if anybody wants to put a complaint in against him as a promoter, they can do. We've never had that before. Um, but it's very disappointing and and and, and, and surprising. But and and, this, and to be fair to you, Gareth, you know as well as I do, as we discuss on a regular basis, we're going through a bit of a tough time at the moment, which is disappointing because ultimately this is a good sport. But we keep shooting ourselves in the foot all the time. And it's very difficult to deal with individuals just looking after themselves and sometimes not looking after the sport. But are you able to flesh out why it takes 14 months? Yeah, I'm going to have to speak to... We're going to have to speak to the UK. But obviously, there is due process. Um, and other, obviously, evidence has to, to go forward. As I say, we're not part of that. But are they allowed three months to four months to give evidence? They give, or they give, it... they, they give a period of time to give evidence, etc. Do you know what that period. is or not? Uh, no, I've got it written down somewhere about three or four months, whatever. But uh, but then obviously, that once they send that evidence, you it has to be looked into, which obviously adds time, etc. Um, so, but it does take too long. I, I'm I'm the first to admit, and there's nobody more frustrated than I am. I can promise you that uh, it does take too long, and we're going to have to deal with that. When someone like so in that period, let's say in that period from. Late February last year, I, was, I mean, I was at the event, of course. Um, from that period, last February to now, if Amir Khan had wanted a box, would he have not been able to? But we didn't know the result after the fight, did we? So we were only, only notified there was a possible, uh, there was a charge in about April sometime. So, no. so but, but after April, would you have... Oh, no, 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 he would have been, there would have, there would have been a provisional suspension. Of there would have been a, right, okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... When Conor Ben sees something like that, given that they've found I say a loophole, they're just going to go to another authority. They're using the WBC exoneration as their uh, kind of pathway to move on, um, which doesn't seem ethically right. So when someone like Conor Ben sees that, presumably his licence would have been suspended as well had he wanted to box in the UK uh, from October onwards last year. He, provisionally, his would have been suspended. Well, don't, don't forget, um, Khan was a UCAD test. Um, ben was a VADA test. So we'd have to make a decision whether he wanted to, if he wanted to box in the meantime, what to do. But when you get... We had two positive tests, so therefore... Fairly confident he wouldn't have been able to box, no. Yeah, so but also as 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 was pointed out recently, um, by by Adam Catterall on and Nick Pete on on the fight disciples to give them fairness in the boxing board of control rules, you you can draw on other tests. It's not a yes, yeah, not we, we, thing, so. we we have a we changed the, the rule, rule. we changed the rules recently with regard to any antidote. When, when were they changed? Um, beginning of February 2022. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so it was already in place. Yeah. So, so it was. It was. A, it was done immediately to be ratified yeah. by the AGM in June or July. Yeah. I can't remember. But yeah. it was a notification went out to all license holders. So it was within the period. Yeah. So, 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 is it is it understandable then under strict liability, perhaps why Connor Ben is 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 if he feels innocent and he and he and he says he's innocent, not feels. If he says he's innocent, um, but there isn't any clear pathway to exonerating himself completely or getting cleared by by UCAD, then he's probably looking at a two year suspension, which is which which, which certainly from where I see here. That 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 would be the big fear for his career right now. Well, the only thing I can say, Jeff, we haven't. There's no. There's been no evidence sent. So how how can you make a decision with regard to that until you see what the reasons are? Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than the fact they've said I'm innocent, which is great. I'm sure you know. Hopefully, I believe he he must. As he believes he is, or in, any individual, not just Connor. But you know, until you see the evidence, how can you speculate what's going to happen? I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm, and and um, the final um, subject to have today, um, one of your referees, Ian John Lewis, 
he's at loggerheads with the boxing board of control now as well. It's all it's all good news at the moment, isn't it, Robert? Yeah. Um, yeah. he's at loggerheads with the boxing board of control as well. Over obviously, it goes back to the um, Josh Taylor Jack Catterall fight. Um, his scoring um, was under scrutiny, and um, he's left the boxing board of control since that, hasn't he? Um, where, where, where are you with that? We have a legal case against us, which obviously I can't go into. I am disappointed, um, very disappointed, um, um, but, but that's how it is. Um, Ian's a good referee. It's not just that particular fight that caused the issue, but as I say, I can't, I can't um, go in too much time, too much, too much detail at the present time, because obviously uh, confidentiality and whatever with regard to a legal case going on. Can you ever remember this happening? Before, with in your time at the board, where there's not been my, not in my time at the board, no, no. no. But as I say, extremely disappointed. I've always supported Ian right from the beginning. Um, went against him this time, unfortunately. Um, but there you are, we just move on. Um, he would have been, you know, within a period of time, I'm sure, with good performances being downgraded, he'd possibly be considered for being upgraded again. You know, this is no different from a Premier League football referee being put to the championship and then coming back again. That's exactly the same. But uh, Ian's decided to take another route, which is ultimately up to him. And, and I respect that. So I don't agree with it, but I respect that. Uh, final thing today. We're first, through the first quarter. There's a chance you to say something good about yeah. boxing. Um, we're, we're just through the first quarter of the year. Um, what, what, what's, what's your, if you were to give a, a brief report on how the first quarter of the year has gone in boxing? What, what would you What would you give me? I think, with regard to shows, it's been good. Personally, it's been tough, very tough, as you can imagine. Uh, but with regard to shows, I mean, something like forty odd shows in March, um, and you know, and most people only see the the big shows on TV. But you know, we've got sh shows in town halls and sports centres, etc. So you know, on the whole, the sports doing really, really well. We tend to forget about that, you know, with regard to the, you know, the anti-doping issue. We, we're testing people every single week. You know, the, the amount of percentage of um, positives is exceptionally low. So not just testing people every single week, out of competition testing, etc. So we pick on the big names, which is obviously understandable. But, you know, this is not something new to us. Um, but I think on the whole, the sport's good. Um, and it's very easy to criticise. Um, but I think we're doing all right, personally. And so we've got a good uh, April and May coming up, obviously. A big fight with uh, Joe Joyce and Jilly Zhang um, yeah. next weekend and also um, weekend after this. And um, and then we go into... But May looks very good. There's a clash, Lee Wood and um, Bronco and Mauricio Lara, obviously fighting on the same night. I think that's in Manchester, isn't it? On the same night that uh, Richard... That, um, that uh, Lawrence Coley defends his, his uh, WBO Cruiserweight title um, at the Bournemouth Football Ground against Chris Billum smith What a great uh, addition yeah, nice. that is, That uh, some fights on the South Coast. We remember the days of Tony Oki and those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, well, who Bournemouth's the... a nice place to go to. So the weather yeah. weather's nice, Bournemouth's a nice place to go to. No, yeah. it's looking good. It's a shame. Katie it's... Taylor and Cameron the week before, of course, you know. No, it's a shame there's, there's a shame there's a clash. Um, that's ultimate for the promoters. Um, we'll do our best to cover them all. But um, And also, you've got Cordina on the 22nd in Cardiff. Yes, that's true. Interesting fight. So it's all stacked up really, really well. So, um, you know, we can't, you know, we can't complain too much. I think at the moment, the promoters are doing a great job. TV's doing a great job. Radio's doing a great job. You know, it's on, on, on Talk Sport, on Radio 5. Um, you know, the streaming services. You know, let's let's just look on the positive. The sport's looking good, uh, but also we need those big heavyweight fights made as well, don't we? Well, I, I agree with that. You do need the big heavyweight fights, and um, uh, because, as you said earlier, um, the sport's healthy when the heavyweights are good, um, but they're not always the best quality. The better, sometimes the better quality, the lower weights. But um, no, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we've, we're very lucky in this country. We've got possibly out of the top. Top five or six, we've got three or four of them, haven't we? So, um, no, it's looking good. It's looking good. 
Robert, as always, I really appreciate your time. Um, have a good day. Onwards and upwards, as we say. On, onwards and upwards. God bless you, Gareth. Take care, mate. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.